for the first time, we're trying to match make the Arabic and the Latin in a size, in a structure, in a grid, and not in a letter form or a letter uh, stroke drawing. Uh, we're trying to have the, the same impact if the letters are printed on a wall in, in English, in Latin or in Arabic, we will have the same visual impact. So it's a question of negative and positive space, black and white relationship. Each person has to carry on where the other stop. And so it will be like a circle, uh, evolving circle, where each one has to learn from the other's experience. This is more than the square. Why is this more than the square? Because it's a mistake. The A, this A, this letter just starts in the middle. We're going to shift everything. We're going to shift it. I'm going to mix, uh, I'm going to combine two letters in one, uh, one letter. Okay. Okay. I think the word is suffering from uh, not knowing the other. And this type of project, it just promote, will promote uh, tolerance and knowing the other. Know someone else is knowing his language, uh, to see his language. Let, let, let me uh, yeah. just throw something in here. Can we talk about the bigger concept? Yeah, you, this, you want to talk about the type. No, I wanted to talk about the bigger the issue. The, yeah. the, the, the type you guys can, it's no, yeah. easier to, to develop yeah. it because we're getting into the minutia of it, which I think is great. I'm not, you know, dismissive of that. It's important to develop it. No, you just said but that I it think wasn't great and it's, it looks ugly and it doesn't work. Yeah, you hate it. No, no. It's still the same as we had. It is duality and since yesterday, amb ambiguity. Four, four word line. The steden die passeren, ik ben de tekst vergeten. Maar dat geeft niet, want hij verstaat er toch niks van. This whole typographic matchmaking is an experimental thing. So it does not matter if the five teams at the end, that some people really got drowned in, in a too experimental uh, view to the, whole, uh, to the whole thing, or that there are certain teams which are quite traditional, making good fonts, which you can also actually glue on a building. All together, 15 people, five teams, will probably, it will be interesting if you put everything together. I would like to see it if there is a simple school somewhere in, uh, in uh, the Arabic world, somewhere in Morocco or in Amsterdam or wherever that you think, oh my God, this is nice really. I see our little dots, I see our lines, I see that they did a text on the wall with our type. <laughs> We want people to be able to take our results and use them.
If you have a font, it's a product. If you have a three-dimensional system or a way of making letters, it's a product. And the idea is that every typographic matchmaking should end with a product that other people can use. Because when you create things that you can give to other people to use, you, you actually instigate change and you help people to go further. It's an opportunity for us as designers not only to meet but also to test our ideas um, through other people's eyes and, and through other designers. But also since the beginning of typographic matchmaking a year ago, uh, my interest was to engage people in our process but also to involve communities and to, to test it on the ground for people to whom this may be relevant. We reached a certain type because this is how far we took it. Their use of our system just confirmed that it's actually a very flexible system and it's a very spatial system. It served the purpose of being a starting point for designers. <laughs> What interests me in this project and what I think also got the designers involved interested in participating is the fact that um, the idea of, of having a conversation through design with another culture was very um, seducing and, and inspiring in some ways because it, it teaches you something. When you try to explain your own culture to someone else, it actually makes you understand yourself better. And I think typography itself is a very subtle uh, representation of culture in general. It represents on one level the meaning of texts. The visual aspect of it tells the whole story as well. What kind of insight it gives you into other people's way of thinking. You know? Are these people too romantic? Are they too structured? Are they crazy? Are they fun? If you don't look at it carefully, you don't pay attention. And if you don't have the historical context, you also lose a lot of the communication. And I think for designers in general, this is at the core of what we do. How can we make things that um, reflect the content of what we're representing, but also add a, another layer, another meaning on top of that by the way we make it. It's a kind of empowerment. You realize you can do a lot in a very, very subtle way, influence the message in a very subtle way, but in a very powerful way because people respond to it. They just don't know why.